Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Curran from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 126. It sounds so simple. Quantity by day. Oh, Mike sent this one over. This is uh, Anthony at Highline has this question. Uh, he has, it looks like uh, 37 rooms here. Here's the date that it was received and the quantity. And then for each weekday, we want to know how many quantity came in there. Well, boy, there's just so many issues here. Issue number one is uh, we don't have a single range. In order to get all this to fit on one screen, Anthony or whoever Anthony works for uh, has two columns. All right, So we have to look through these dates. We have to look through these dates. The other issue, these aren't real dates. This is text. This is FRI space 5 slash 17. And I'm like, oh, Anthony, really? Come on. Let's uh, format this. We can make it look like you want it to look like. Um, but let's really do this as date. So I'm proposing putting in 5 slash 17. Uh, okay, I understand that's not what you want it to look like. Control 1, and then we come in here to custom, and we say DDD space M slash D. Uh, click OK. All right, so I'm proposing converting everything, and actually in my version, I have converted all of those to dates rather than leave them as text. All right, now over here, uh, off to the side, I'm going to create some helper columns. Um, the helper column says we're going to get the weekday of D2, comma 2, and that's going to give us a number from 1 to 7. But hey, the blanks come in uh, with a weekday because the blank, you know, that's January 1st, 1900, and uh, we're getting a weekday there. So I need to make sure that if the cell is blank, I'm getting 0. So I'm multiplying it by not is blank. If it is blank, that's true, uh, times not, and what that does is it zeroes things out. So if there is no date, I'm getting a zero for the weekday instead of the number 1 through 7. I'm also careful here to use the comma 2, which gives me the numbers 1 through 7 instead of 0 through 6 uh, that you can get in some of those. And then the quantity here is just simple, copy that over. Uh, so we'll copy this down through all of the rooms, through all of the data. Right there, Control V. All right, now I'm going to take this weekday calculation and copy it over here. And it's not the right number of columns over, so it's pointing at the wrong place. But I can simply drag the blue box there to point to the right place. And then also here, see, because there are two things pointing to G2, I'm only able to drag one of them. Uh, so I'm going to have to manually edit that one. And then the quantity, simple enough, just point to this quantity here. All right, copy this down down through room 37 on the second set of columns. All right, and now that I have this, I'm going to Control X to cut, go down to the bottom and Control V to paste. Now I have a beautiful, nice little one, uh, one range that I just have to look through. It all becomes very, very simple from this point. Uh, put the numbers here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I see the values above changing. Those must be some random things. Equal, uh, I'm going to use sum if. I know I could use some ifs, but I'm going to use some if. Uh, look through these weekday numbers over here, F4, comma, see if it's equal to the value just below me that I typed in, comma, and if it is, give me the corresponding value from this column over here, F4. All right, so there's our 39, 35 on Tuesday, not on Wednesday, not on Thursday, some on Friday, some on Saturday, some on Sunday. There you go. All right, so, uh, boy, just, you know, I realize, you know, you, you get a job, you go in and someone created this worksheet and it can be an ugly, ugly worksheet with the, the text and things like that. So lots of work around here just to get those formulas to work. Of course, I know Mike will knock out some insane array formula. That's what he tends to do because he's the author of the best-selling book on array formulas in the planet. So Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. The best-selling author on array formulas on the planet. You know how many books I've sold? Zero. Wow. Zero makes you the best. Oh, my heavens. A array formula. You know, I'm not going to use an array formula here. Now, the thing about this is, is Anthony uh, is in my class at Highline, and he sent me this template, and I just sent him an email back that says, oh, this is not a well-made spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to deal with the fact that th this is text and build a formula from that point of view. Now, I'm going to also notice that I have these three letter abbreviations for the day here. And it looks like all of the text dates also have that three letter abbreviation. 
Yeah, well, look, there's a four letter. So they've been consistent, right? Monday, Friday. Over here, we have a Tuesday. So I'm going to use this text here as the criteria and then just do some sort of sum if based on these text dates. So I'm going to use the sum if. The range, that has all the criteria. Now, there's two different columns. So I'm actually going to just use two different sum if formulas. So I got that range right there. I'm going to F4 to lock it, comma, and the criteria. Well, if I click right here, it'll get zero matches. But I'm noticing the pattern. There's always the abbreviation for the, the day and then some stuff after. So I'm going to join to this using Shift 7, the ampersand, a wild card. And the wild card has to be in double quotes. Now, that asterisk is a wild card that says, hey, give me zero or more characters. So it could see T-U-E-S or T-U-E-S space or T-U-E-S space and then whatever. All right? So that'll be our criteria. And then a comma to get to that sum range. Now, I'm actually going to copy this and use this a second time, Control-C. The sum range is going to be this range right here. All right. F4 to lock it. All right, so that's the first one. And then plus some if. And the range, that's going to be over here. And it's a slightly different size range, but no problem. F4 to lock it. Comma, oops, Control V, comma, oops, I already had the comma. And then I'll get this second sum range here. F4 to lock it. And that formula should do it. Really, it's just uh, that Tuesday with any text afterwards. Control 35. Enter. So there we get R35. Now, I'm going to actually use the Control key and click, click. I'm holding Control down and selecting cells not next to each other. And I'm going to make sure that the last cell I select is that cell, hit F2, and now I'm going to populate this formula into all of these non-contiguous cells by holding Control and Enter. So there we go. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Well, always, always interesting things there, Mr. Gervin. I love that. The uh, wild card, you know, I've done uh, greater than ampersand, greater than in quotes ampersand some number before as a criteria. I guess it makes perfect sense that the wild card would work. Uh, the cool trick there for the uh, uh, pasting into non-contiguous cells. And, uh, you know, it's not the number of books you sold right now. It's the number of pre-orders. And based on the pre-orders, Mike, Control-Shift-Enter is still the world's best-selling book on Excel array formulas. Uh, so can't wait to get my copy. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.